This segment of the Angus Report is brought to you by Omega Farms, a commitment to environmental stewardship, a place for outdoor recreation and hunting opportunities, and a source for quality, industry-leading Angus genetics. Omega Farms, become a part of the tradition. Visit us at omegafarms.com. As genomic data plays a growing role in genetic evaluations, more and more producers are learning to submit DNA samples. And contrary to popular belief, it's not as difficult as it may seem. We go now to the American Angus Association's Crystal Albers and Don Laughlin for more. Hi, I'm Crystal Albers for the Angus Report. I'm here with the American Angus Association's Director of Member Services, Don Laughlin. Don's going to show us how to take a DNA sample today. Uh, so Don, tell us some of the things that we need uh, just to get started. Well, first of all, you're going to have to decide what kind of a sample you're going to take, Crystal. Uh, you need to decide whether you're going to use an FTA card, whether you're going to do a, a sample by pulling hair. Uh, so I think that's the number one thing you're going to decide on what type of DNA sample you're going to collect, whether it be blood, whether it be hair, whatever it might be. The second thing you're going to decide is you're going to have to have your equipment depend on what you're going to use. If you're going to use a FTA card, for example, which most of the samples that we collect at AAA and AGI are, they're a card, it's a blood block card, with, and you can collect a sample, a blood sample, in the size of a, on a card, the size of a quarter. You're going to need a sterile vaccination needle. If you happen to decide you're going to pull uh, by tail bleeding, you're going to need a sterile needle and a sterile syringe that's never been used. And when it comes to the tail, uh, pulling tail hair, all you have to do is have that collection card that you're going to put that hair on and make sure that you've got a way to identify that animal on the card. So it's very important that you have that identification and you match that sample with that individual animal. But what the method of storage, uh, most of our DNA samples come in on are our FTA samples. We can use them for parentage verification. We can use them for DNA testing, uh, for genomics. We also use them for uh, genetic defect testing. So they have lots of applications and that's why we uh, archive these. So Don, tell us how you would c go about collecting a sample. Well in this case I want to collect a, a sample on an FTA card. So I've got my FTA card. I put my identification on that. Which in this case this is the ear tag. It also in, an, in this particular sample that ear tag also matches the tattoo that's in the animal. So what I want to do is mark my card and I'm going to use some paper towels and what I want to do is I want to wipe the wax on the inside of the ear out. It can be dry or you can use some uh, rubbing alcohol on a terry cloth. That's probably the best way to get the wax of the ear. Main thing is to keep everything sanitary. If you didn't have ear tags in both ears, I would prefer to use the ear that doesn't have the tag because it's just another obstacle to, to work around. So I like the better the, the sample to get, the closer the, to the inside of the ear you can get. So I've got that ear wiped out. I'm going to make sure my ear tag and my uh, FTA card match, the identi identical identification numbers, so I know I picked up the right card that matches this individual animal. So once I've done that, then I'm ready to go ahead and prick the ear with the clean sterile vaccination needle. And I'm going to go right on the inside, as far as I can go on the inside, to prick that inside of that ear so I can get a place where the blood will weld up and then I can put it on my card. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick the heifer. It's just a nice little prick. And as you can see, the blood starts to weld up. Once that, that blood starts to weld up, it'll take a little bit because you, I didn't make a very big hole. It was just a little prick of a needle. Then I'm going to take my card my FTA card. I'm going to fold it so I can get that in there where the blood's welted up. I'm going to stick that card right on top of that so that circle and that blood match up. And I'm just going to hold it on there just a little bit. Push it in so that blood welts up. I don't want too much blood on that card, but I want to make sure that I can get enough that they can get a good DNA sample punch out of that. And with that, I've got a sufficient sample. I would like to, ideally, I'd like to have a little more blood on that card, but uh, it will work, and it, with some time, depending on what your time element is, the, well, the blood will continue to weld up on the inside of the ear, and you can continue to put more blood on that card. Well, thank you, Don. 
If you have any other questions about collecting DNA samples, contact Angus Genetics Incorporated or the American Angus Association's Member Services Department. For the Angus Report, I'm Crystal Albers. Thanks, Crystal. Visit angus.org to learn more about submitting DNA samples and their applications on the farm.